All right. So now we're ready to get a really nice crimp onto our bullets. Now, just as I explained in the beginning of this load series, this die and seat stem is the same as this die and seat stem. Remember, these dies are capable of seating and crimping. So if we want, we can use this die for both steps. It's just that you won't seat and crimp on the same stroke of the handle. So what you would do is you would set this die up to seat the bullets just like we did and then you off adjust it what you would do you would raise this seat stem up and you would slightly lower the die body to perform the crimp but since we have the turret press it would be um, it would be more effective and efficient for us to utilize one more die position and bring another die in so we can go right ahead and seat the bullet and then come right over and crimp. So what we do is we order a second die. The same die as this. Okay, I'll put the link in the description box below. So now what we're going to do for this die we're simply going to remove this seat stem. We don't need it. We've already performed that step of the operation. Put your uh, seat stem back in your die box. Run that lock ring all the way up to the uppermost portions of the thread and now we're going to just get it started. Now uh, you want to do a good job on your crimp and here's why one when you over crimp you are cold forming the mouth of that cartridge case you're crunching it while it's cold you're gonna take the life out of it okay two your crimp it's what produces uniform pressures from case to case to case to case. You want that to be the same. So, as we said earlier in this series, we want to make sure that the lengths are all the same. If not, we have to trim back and follow along. We'll do that in the series. We're going to go through a full case prep on these for you. Then, the crimp. We want to get it just right. This die for the 3030 Winchester is going to give us a roll crimp. The reason we need a roll crimp is because these are going to be lined up in the magazine tube of your rifle. We got a lot of slamming action going on and we don't want that bullet to move. Okay, We want it to stay uh, stationary right where it's at. So <clears throat> you're going to take this die body and just get it threaded into position like that place the cartridge case into the shell holder, run it up slowly, make sure that there's nothing impeding that cartridge whatsoever. Now, you're going to begin threading this die body. There's going to come a point where you're going to fill it, make contact just coming into the mouth of that cartridge case. Right there, okay? Now, instructions will tell you that a heavy crimp is like X amount, a light crimp is X amount. Well, all right, this is how I do it. I don't start adjusting this per a sixteenth or an eighth or a quarter until I have taken all this play out. So this is what you're going to do. 
lower the ram and pay attention to how far you're turning it just so you have reference turn it say about you know an eighth run the ram back up see if you have some wiggle I have a little bit of wiggle I can feel it not much drop the cartridge out turn it just a sixteenth not much I still have a little wiggle I'm gonna turn it another sixteenth you see that die stand up like that now what's happening is is the machine portion the crimp portion of that die body it is coming into firm contact with the mouth of that cartridge case that's what's happening it's pretty solid so now at this point for a light crimp I can go between a sixteenth and an eighth right in there if I want a little heavier crimp go another sixteenth to an eighth more that's it alright now you have to kind of uh, experiment with it first off um, <clears throat> develop a keen eye for a good roll crimp if you want to learn what a good roll crimp looks like study them when you go to gun shows look at people's hand loads look at the reloads look at factory rounds uh, when you go into a local gun shop don't just start opening boxes ask them say hey can I see a factory roll crimp they'll show you but now this is the deal um, a roll crimp is a very it's the strongest crimp you can apply to a bullet what you want to do is once you have these all crimped you're gonna know the cartridge overall length and now what you're gonna do you're gonna mark one with ink just ink it up so you can identify it and you're going to load it into the rifle and this will be the first one into the magazine tube you'll file you you will fire all of them except this one don't fire that reload the rifle with this one uh, furthest into that tube and continue to do that and after four or five cycles through that rifle you should be able to pull this out and that bullet should pretty much be right where it was if it's a couple thousands I wouldn't worry about that okay deformation of the the bullet and and you know really pay attention to that cantaloupe where's that position in the cantaloupe because you can kind of you know, push that tip of that bullet down and that could throw you off but the big indicator is going to be is is the uh, mouth of that cartridge case sitting right where it was in the cantaloupe and that's with with all ammunition that you've uh, loaded up that way judge it off the cantaloupe the best you can now you know, very critical before we go any further we're going to make certain aha uh -huh, we have chamber fit even if it's a new case you want to make sure the 3030 Winchester it has a bit of a um, a weak shoulder if you will it doesn't take much to change the dimensions of that through um, the process of reloading just it just it's just that way so but you, what you'll find is this if at this point uh, this being a new cartridge case if it doesn't uh, chamber properly you have done something wrong you just haven't done something quite right in whatever you're working with so kind of step back go back and go through it and I'm gonna say this what you guys are seeing is you're seeing um, these loads that I'm uh, working up but really this is kind of a double-edged sword if you will you really your first time through you should only be loading 10 of these to the same charge and going out and seeing if they go bang I had a decision with this series did we just want to load 10 and have you go shoot it and go bang or did I want to show you how to do a uh, a series of these working with different charges but through the journey you also understand that well your first ones really you just want them to go bang and to cycle and to fit isn't isn't that what you need right you you need it to go bang effectively once 
you know that it's going to function in your rifle now you can come back to this point in the game and you can begin working with different powder charges it's your bench do it how you want and um, it doesn't hurt it does not hurt it never hurts as you are um, doing these especially with rifle uh, rifle you can never be too meticulous check each one in that case as you go another thing now this is the point where you're inspecting everything about what you've done here you are um, looking for that roll crimp you're making sure that that uh, shoulder hasn't been infringed on at all it's you know, the integrity of it is just perfect how do your primers look are you sloppy in other words was there junk on the ram to where when you seated that it put an indentation do you have all these indentations on your cartridge cases here's one for you when you go to garage sales and you see people selling ammo that they've reloaded or you go to gun shows and you see ammo that someone's reloaded uh, take a moment and look at the primers closely do they look like they've been almost flattened out because they're priming them so hard um, does it look like that they have indentations on them because the priming ram was dirty when they seated? Um, that's gonna. Um, these are. Those are actually signs of a person. That doesn't mean they're not a good reloader. It just means they weren't paying attention. And that's a that that right there. Um, uh, think about your reloads. Are you paying attention? And this is for the 3030 Winchester. Okay, you know, in its days, this was the high volume rifle, but not no more, not anymore. It's the, you know, it's the, it's the uh, AR-15s, the AR-10s, the AR rifles. Okay, those are high volume. If you are learning to load for one of those, where you're doing thousands around you still want to go baby steps and do a lot of checking and on all of my AR uh, rifle stuff I check it just like this every single one of them if I'm gonna load a thousand of them I'm gonna check a thousand of them because it can it can save you and it can save you bank too another thing um, on my progressive machine if I'm gonna do a thousand rounds of two two three I don't crank them all out and then check them as I go um, I'm stopping and I'm checking uh, as I progress through and I might stop and do 50 at a time so if I'm gonna reload a thousand rounds I might stop and chamber check 50 at a time because all of a sudden you can do get into let's say you're 200 into it and all of a sudden they're not chamber checking and you realize something's off on your machine it's best to catch it and then that batch of 50 maybe you can correct it but if you got to pull bullets it's better to pull bullets off of 50 rounds than it is uh, you know a millennium of rounds if you know what I'm talking about a thousand rounds that's a lot of work and that's a lot of your money uh, so um, reloader beware and you wanna at this point now at this point um, that we ha have the crimp right where we want it you're going to run the cartridge case up into the die so it stabilizes the die and you're going to simply tighten it down okay now um, listen very carefully to me um, when we seated the bullet we did all that in one step in other words what we didn't do is we didn't come over here and we we didn't uh, seat the bullet and then switch over here to crimp but now you can you can do it you cut your die set up these dies are set to where once you go to the range and come back the only thing you are uh, adjusting is the powder charge now think about it this extra die we bought we've got it all set up okay and we've got it set up on this turret head we're doing a good job uh, so now what we can do 
you can remove this turret head and put it back your dice are all stationary you're ready to go and the nice thing about setting your dies up this way all right you can come out here and uh, with this on my handgun I truck along about 100 rounds an hour on my rifle probably about the same but as you're seeing every bit of this is precision and you know it's right now what the trick's going to be is we're going to take this to the range and we're going to run it through our rifle and now we're going to have to size these cases back and uh, with remembering that you're not going to get as much uh, out of a 30-30 uh, case as you are other cases but when we come back we want to better form these to our chamber even though you're not going to get a ton of reloads out of these the least amount we are sizing these back even though this headspace is off the rim we still have to fit our chamber so the closer this is to our chamber when we just slightly resize it the more rounds you're going to get out of it and the more precision all right so um there you go so now as for sitting here crimping these uh, you're you're running each one up and let me tell you you know I have this YouTube channel and I tell you that you need to uh, do this in the way that I'm telling you well when I shut that off guess what I do I hold the same standards for myself this is how I do it and when I go and I'm gonna tell you guys this um, when I go and I shoot, I rarely have issues where my loads don't function. Uh, the biggest time I have, uh, um, the biggest problem I have with loads not functioning would be like my handgun. Maybe I've got a primer that I, um, I had a light primer strike because maybe I, I seated the primer too hard or, or not enough. That's the biggest problem. But as far as um, my ammo cycling through my firearms, they run like a they run like a sewing machine, smooth, perfect, feeds it all right. However, I want to shoot it fast, slow, and that's what you want. And um, sometimes I'll have like reloaders ask me, you know, when do you speed up? Well, I would say. It is a, a natural progression, and we're human, so our human side always tells us, go faster. That's just how we're built. It's not like we're human and we're going to say, all right, I'm going to put myself on a schedule, and, and I'm going to uh, you know, speed up on this many rounds and that many rounds. That's really not logical. It's not practical. But what I would say is don't think about uh, speeding up uh, okay um, do this focus on consistency that's what you need to do the speed because we're human that will automatically come don't think about the speed instead think about doing everything in a way that every time you go to the range and you have a shooting session it was really nice um, let's take a, a side accuracy let's pull that out of the equation you know when you go to the range one of the things you're wanting to do is have proper gun etiquette and you you're wanting to practice drills and things the last thing you want to incorporate into your drills is ammo that's not functioning okay I don't care what you're shooting, whether it's your 1911, your Glock, your, your AR rifle, or your lever action. Your lever action, you should really be running in a way that if you had to use it in your home for self-defense, you would be smooth, bullseye about it. You can't do that if your ammunition isn't going to cycle. So the goal and the focus for you is not speed. It's not. Um, it's this 
it's consistency over time. Um, kind of like a long time ago, I had a guy ask me, he says, hey, you want to go, go with me in my airplane? And I thought, well, I said, I'll get back with you on that. And so I went to a really good friend of mine. Well, see, the guy that invited me to go up in his plane, he said he'd been flying for, you know, a number of years, right? Well, so I went to another good friend of mine who really you know, was a good pilot. Um, and I asked him, I said, you know, this guy, he, he, he wants to go flying. And I said, how do you know? I said, he, he's been flying for a number of years. And he said, you know, he says, I've always found it's not how long you've flown. He said, it's how often. That's what you need to ask that guy. So the question for you isn't how long you've been reloading. It's how much have you been reloading and how consistent are you with the quality and the function don't worry about the shot groups you will get better with tailoring powder bullet combo that's the journey I'm telling you your shot groups is the journey the function of this in the chamber that's the mechanics and that's what we're learning okay all right, guys and gals, that's the end of this video. God bless. We'll see you on the next.